Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video, what we're going to do uh, is uh, look at, uh, examine in a bit more detail uh, the limits in uh, the metric space CAB, i.e. Uh, the set of all continuous functions on the interval AB. And for now, we're just looking at real valued functions. Uh, so uh, to draw a picture, this is the set of all functions which map the interval AB onto R uh, such that those functions are continuous, so such that uh, f is continuous. Okay, uh, so a nice picture is, uh, here is the interval AB, so AB here, the closed interval AB, and you have something along the lines of this, like that, and there's a function that's in this, uh, in this set. Okay, and uh, there are many metrics that we can put on this. We saw two that, that, that we could put on it. One of the ones, and the one we're going to examine in this, vid in this video, is the supremum metric. So, um, the, uh, in, uh, to turn this into a metric space, the way we defined it was the distance, and sometimes you'll see it written as uh, d infinity, because it is, it's analogous to l infinity, it's almost like the um, continuous version of l infinity, uh, where um, l infinity was the discrete version of this, if you like. Um, okay, uh, it's meaning that uh, it's like a sequence with uncountably infinitely many po uh, terms rather than countably infinitely many terms. Okay, so uh, the distance between two functions, f and g, uh, which are elements of CAB, so f and g are both continuous functions on the interval AB, okay, the distance between them is defined to be equal to the supremum uh, 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 for x is an element of this interval AB of the modulus of f of x minus g of x. So basically, if you have two functions that say, uh, here's f and here's g here, then what you need to do is take the difference between them, take the modulus, i.e. take the size difference between their heights at each point, put them all into a set and basically take the supremum of that set. And basically what you will find is that if we plot out, if I plot out over here, the function, uh, the modulus of uh, f, uh, f of x minus g of x. So basically what I'm doing is I'm plotting uh, the size of this difference between them here. In this case, f is always, the way I've drawn it, f is always bigger than g. Uh, but, uh, so f minus g is always going to be a positive number, so it, it basically makes the uh, absolute value sign unnecessary in this case. But in more general cases, uh, you'll have uh, potentially f being lower than g, and s potentially in some places it'll be lower, some places it'll be above, etc. Uh, so this modulus will become more important there. So if we plot this function, it begins quite low, then it goes up towards there, and then it goes down again, and then it starts to go up towards the end. Something like that, basically. And then what we're going to find is that that is always a continuous function. The modulus of f of x minus g of x is always a continuous function. And the reason for that is that f and g are continuous functions. So f of x minus g of x is a continuous function. And basically, taking the modulus func of a continuous function doesn't change the fact that it's still a continuous function. So the modulus of f of x minus g of x is going to be a continuous function. And there's a theorem in real analysis that says that uh, if a function is continuous on a uh, closed interval a b like this like this uh, like this interval a b that we have here uh, then it will obtain its maximum and minimum so basically it will be bounded above and bounded below and it will actually attain its maximum and minimum so here is it and the the maximum in this case and it actually obtains it so basically, you can't have uh, the modulus of f of x minus g of x being some uh, function that go asymptotes off somewhere, uh, because that would imply that f and g were not continuous functions, basically. Okay, uh, right. Uh, so um, so uh, this, this is the metric. This is uh, what we might call the supremum metric on uh, this metric, on this set, basically, the supremum metric, and it creates the metric space. So CAB, along with this, uh, along with this metric, which I'll call the supremum metric, d infinity, uh, does form a metric space, and we checked long, long ago that this was the case. Okay, right, uh, so now what we want to do is get some more intuition for what it means uh, for a sequence of continuous functions in CAB uh, to converge to a limit within this metric space. Okay, 
So, let's say we have a sequence, S, which is a sequence of functions. So we'll start off with f1 of x, f2 of x, f3 of x, etc. And you go on and on and on. Now, each one of these is a function. So basically, if we plotted them out, if we plotted them out on a graph, so here is our interval a, b. If we plotted them out on a graph, then you have, let's say, here is f1. Uh, let's say um, here is f2, maybe, here is f3, etc, f4. So they are all functions, and it's important to remember that they are not just numbers. They are functions that map this real, uh, this um, interval a, b onto the real numbers. Okay, now what does it mean to converge in this metric space? Well, it means the same, it, what does it mean for this limit to exist? So let's say it converges uh, to some, let's say in this metric space, this um, this sequence of functions is going to converge to some limit function which we'll call L of x. So uh, let's say it's getting closer and closer to L of x here, so I'll call that L of x. So gradually all of the ones preceding it, um, all of the terms of the sequence are going to get closer and closer to that L of x basically. Okay, so um, so, um, what does it mean to converge in there? It means that for, well, actually, I shouldn't have drawn the picture like that, because we don't know that the picture, that that is what it means. It means what it means, it means exactly what the definition is going to say, which I'm about to write out. We're going to see that it does correspond to the intuitive notion of what it means for a bunch of functions to converge to another function i.e. each of the uh, function, you know, each of the functions is getting closer and closer, each of these lines is getting closer and closer to being the L line. Okay, so for all epsilon greater than zero, there must exist a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers. This is exactly what it means to converge. If this sequence of functions converges to L of x, then it means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there will exist some natural number uh, such that if little n, which is also a natural number, is greater than or equal to big N, it will imply that the distance between the uh, nth function in this sequence, f little n x, and the limit function uh, is going to be less than epsilon. So basically what this says is that you give me any epsilon, I must be able to find you some big N such that if I go to that nth term in this sequence, the nth function in this sequence of functions, and I take any function beyond there, so any f uh, n little n x, so any function that's in the tail end of this sequence, so little n is greater than or equal to big N, so any function that's in the tail end of this sequence of functions, if I pick that and ask what's the distance in this metric space between that uh, nth function in the sequence of functions and the limited function, then that needs to be less than epsilon. And you must be able to find a big N for whatever epsilon I give you. Okay, uh, right. Now let's just replace with, uh, replace d infinity, uh, well, let's replace the d infinity of fnx and lx with what it actually is. It's equal to, this implies, that the supremum over x is an element of a, b, of the modulus of fnx minus lx needs to be less than epsilon. So basically all I've done is substitute in how do you compute the distance in this metric space between two functions? Well, you use that formula up there. Okay, so what does this actually mean? This says that if I write out exactly what this is, because this, this is a nice sort of shorthand notation for something that uh, takes longer to write. This means, what this means is the supremum of the modulus of fnx minus lx, where x is an element of the, ele of the set ab. So basically what this means is go along every single real number in the interval ab, plug it into the function f little nx and the function lx and take uh, the difference between those two real numbers, take the modulus of that difference, put it them all into a set. So for every single x is, is an element of this interval a, b, put them all into a set basically. Uh, so you'll have uh, x is equal to a, you'll have x is equal to b, and you'll have every single number in between. Put them all into a set, take the supremum of that set, that has to be less than epsilon. What that means is that if I draw, if I make another picture, because the one above is a bit crowded, if I draw the interval a, b to back here, and I have the limit function here, so this is our limit function, let's say, so this is L of x. Now, basically, 
any uh, f little n you choose uh, uh, that's beyond this f big n in this sequence has to be has to satisfy this condition. Now, if the supremum of all of the moduluses of the differences between um, the uh, function lx and the function f little n x is, le uh, is less than epsilon, then that implies that all the elements of this set are less than epsilon. So if the supremum of this set is less than epsilon, that implies that all of the elements have to be less than epsilon. Otherwise, the supremum would be bigger than epsilon, basically. Uh, so, the modulus of fn little uh, x minus lx um, uh, must be less than epsilon, and that goes for all elements in this set. So that means for all little x is an element of the interval a, b. Right, so if I want to draw on this function f little n x, firstly I know it has to be a continuous function. And did I actually say that when I was... No, I don't think I did. Um, this sequence, by the way, was a sequence of functions that were all in uh, c, a, b. So f i is an element of c, a, b. So they were all continuous functions. I'm sorry I didn't state that at the time. Um, basically, we know that f little n x is going to be a continuous function, but... At every point, so if I take any, let's say, little x is an element of this interval a, b, the modulus of the difference between that value, the value that f little n ascribes to this point x, and the value that the limit function lx ascribes to this uh, point x, they have that modulus of that has to be less than epsilon. So basically, what I can do is I can draw a ribbon around this uh, around this function here, and a ribbon of um, a ribbon of um, what should I say of width uh, epsilon. Uh, well, width, width two epsilon. So on this side, it's got a uh, the distance from the upper boundary of the ribbon here is going to be epsilon, and the distance from the lower boundary is going to also be epsilon. So that total width here is going to be two epsilon. Okay, and basically, all of the points within there are a modulus away from the limit function less than epsilon. So, for instance, if you take any point, little x is an element of the interval a, b, then all of the points um, in on the vertical line uh, going through the point x uh, that are within that ribbon there, so this strip of points here, so let me get my highlighters, this strip of points here are all the points corresponding to x, and basically they are all the points that f little n could take on, could possibly take on at that value x, because uh, those are the only points where if you take the difference between uh, that value uh, in that ribbon and the value of the function l, and take the modulus, it's going to be less than epsilon. If you take any point outside of the ribbon like that, uh, then uh, the modulus of the difference between that point and L, uh, and the point that L ascribes the um, the point little x, is going to be uh, greater than epsilon. Okay, so this entire this entire function f little n has to basically be in this ribbon. So we could draw something like that, if you imagine. Okay, so that is what this means, basically. So if we rewrite now what this means, this means uh, that. You give me any epsilon you like. If this sequence, sorry, if this sequence of continuous functions does converge to Lx, which we're going to show, it, it, it will have to be another continuous function. Well, it obviously has to be another continuous function because we're saying this sequence of continuous functions. So this sequence of functions from CAB converges in this metric space. So Lx also has to be an element of this metric space. So it's a continuous function too. If it does converge, then what that means is it means that if I draw Lx, so if I draw Lx, so let's keep the same one, so here is Lx, so if you draw this limit function Lx, and you give me what it means for this sequence of continuous functions to converge to Lx in this metric space, is that for whatever epsilon you give me, I can draw a ribbon around that function, so here is my ribbon around the function, like that, of uh, width 2 epsilon, so of uh, the upper boundary of the ribbon is epsilon above the um, above the function, this is the L function, remember, and the lower boundary of the ribbon is epsilon below the ribbon, okay? 
And basically, you must be able to find some big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, uh, such that if you take any function in the sequence of continuous functions that is in the tail end, i.e. is equal to that function f big N of x, or is beyond it in this sequence, so to the right of it, uh, then the, then all of those functions, all of those functions in that tail end must be within that ribbon, okay? So they must be something like this. So basically, the statement that you converge to this uh, function Lx in the metric space CAB with the supremum metric on means that whatever epsilon you give me, construct an e I can construct an epsilon ribbon like this around the limit function and I can find some point, some term in this sequence such that that term and all terms beyond it in the sequence are within the epsilon ribbon and you can do that for any epsilon. So that is what it means uh, to converge to a limit in this metric space. Okay, uh, so quite intuitively, yes, the lines of these uh, of these function of these functions are going to get closer and closer to the line of the function L because uh, whatever epsilon you give me, I can make a smaller and smaller and smaller ribbon, and basically I will always be able to find you a tail end of this sequence such that all of the functions are within that finer and finer ribbon, getting closer and closer uh, to this limiting function. So. Your, our intuition about how uh, these functions should, these, you know, these lines representing the functions should be getting closer and closer and closer um, to, uh, closer and closer and closer to uh, the function, uh, the limit function is correct in this metric space. In the next video, what we'll see is, we'll oh, well, actually, um, well, actually, we'll discuss this in the next video. In fact, actually, we'll discuss it now. Um, so, this way of convergence, basically, this mean, this way in which these functions converge, uh, if these functions, if this sequence of continuous functions does converge to Lx in this metric space, this mechanism of convergence has a name in real analysis. It's called uniform convergence. Okay, and uh, basically it's called uniform convergence because it's analogous uh, to uh, uniform convergence of, in the sequence space L infinity, which is also called uniform convergence. Uh, and basically the reason is that I can find you basically, uh, for whatever epsilon you give me, I can find you a point in this sequence of sequences such that all of the points, for all of the points, little x, which is an element of the interval a, b, all of them are within epsilon, basically, of their limit. Uh, so, of the, um, of the, co of the point in to which uh, the limiting function, the limit function, ascribes them. So, basically, every point, little x, which is an element of this interval a, b, is ascribed a point uh, in the real numbers uh, by uh, the limit function L. So it has some value, L, X, okay? And basically, you, the reason it's called uniform convergence is I can find you a point in this sequence of sequences where it's not just the case that, you know, one of these points, uh, for one of these points, little X is an element of A, B, I can, uh, I can find you, uh, it's the case that uh, the, um, distance, the modulus of f little nx minus lx, so the modulus of the difference between the uh, value that the function f little n ascribes this point x and uh, the value that the function l ascribes the uh, point little x uh, is less than epsilon. It's the case that for absolutely all of them it's going to do that, and that's going to be different to another notion of convergence, which we'll introduce in the next video, called pointwise convergence, and uh, just it's just like in the case of sequence spaces, basically. Anyway, we'll cut it there for this video and continue in the next video.